What are you doing, Mr. Cheeky? What are you doing? You want some beer? You want some of my beer? You want some beer? Mr. Cheeky. Okay. <laughs> you don't like Kronbacher? No? Nah? Tastes good, buddy. That's my shoe. So, Lou's five year old stallion is behaving like a stallion, and it is a thing of beauty. The thoroughbred in him means that if I bring another horse up next to him, he turns into sea biscuit. Full of grass. It's quite exciting to ride though. So this is what happens when you let Marengo go. Good boy. There's your buddy. There's your buddy. There's your buddy. There's your little dog friend. Hello, little dog. Good boy, Marengo. Ooh. Ha, ha. Good boy. All right, so we just got back. Um, and I'll just quickly show you um, the setup that we're using this year. So obviously, this is Mr. Marengo, AKA the big gray dickie. So we have our mohair breastplates. Um, we've found that mohair just, it just works better than anything else. We have our twin mohair girths, and we find that they just work better than anything else. We have never, ever had a single girth issue. Mr. Marengo chews everything. Um, never had a girth issue with the mohair girths. So the saddles, they're our carbon fiber long rider saddles. I'll just hold these. I'll just show you how we get them off the horse. Um, I then have a sheepskin, which I can have either up or down. You can see how it's really right up in the, um, in the channel of the saddle. Underneath that, I have a double layer deer skin and when it comes off the horse, you have a look at that. It's an absolutely superb contact, but most importantly, the deer skin is just so slick. There's absolutely no friction whatsoever, just as you get with the sheepskin. Um, we've gone away from traditional pads for a few reasons. Um, natural fibers are best with the sheepskin down. It keeps the horse nice and cool with the sheepskin up the other way, it'll keep the horse warm. So that's a bit of a difference for summer and winter. So I'll just grab my saddle and just drag that through underneath the horse. Um, we do all of this kind of shit. I know people think it's idiotic, but that's why we have quiet horses. Okay, so much like a um, Western pad, we have sheepskin here. One of the reasons we have sheepskin here is because uh, you can ride in just the saddle. Um, you don't need to ride in just the saddle, but a good way to check saddle fit is to just ride in the saddle. Now, you can see I've got just a little neoprene shim in there. Um, we can adjust that, because that's what I know Marengo very well. That's where his muscles grow. Um, so as his muscles grow, which will grow just here, that shim will come out and yeah, he'll be away. So another thing we do with our saddles that um, I just, especially in like English saddles, which quite honestly, I think is shite. Um, at the back here, we really flare the back. When you're going downhill, um, especially going downhill, you'll find the saddles will move backwards and forwards quite a bit. Now there's pressure points all down the horse's spine that we don't want to touch. Buck point, we've got other points here, two here. See, see straight away, as soon as I touch him there, he doesn't like it. 
He's looking at me, looking at me. And there's another two. See, straight away, you see, and another one there. See, okay? So these are the pressure points we're avoiding on the horse. So everything we do is to avoid these points. And you see, the second I touch him, he responds. So um, when you're going downhill, the problem that we found with Louise's horse, um, a horse all, will nearly always have a stronger shoulder. On Marengo and Banditi, this is the stronger shoulder. So it moves back more. And what we were getting with Lou's saddle is it just kinks over just that little bit more to the right. So going downhill, he was just getting a little bit of pressure on that side of his spine. We just shimmed him a bit differently. We've switched the pads and we've got rid of that problem. Uh, this is, all of this stuff is shit I didn't know six years ago. Um, I certainly didn't have a horse that I could just do this with six years ago. I mean, look at him. He's a chilled out dude. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that if you want to have a talk with us, if you want to become a long rider, have a yarn with us. Um, we've come a long way to get to this point. Um, I have 7,000 kilometers just on this horse alone. And he is still a dickhead, aren't you, mister? So um, yeah, um, this is why we built these saddles. Um, they're really light, they work. Um, we just had a great ride. Ringo's just stepping all over his tack. Um, and yeah, we do things we do things very differently than most people. I mean, all of this crap. You know, um, yeah, it's the kind of stuff you need to do as a long rider. Just develop that bond, develop that trust, develop that love. Um, and I can't stress enough, get gear that fits. Oh boy. There we go. Anyway, I hope everyone in internet land is having a great day. I'm going to enjoy yet another schnapps. This stuff, what's this called, Lou? The one um, with the, the flower. Blue the woods. So good, 50% alcohol. Mm. It's laughing at me. Have a great day, everyone. They are very, very, very happy horses. It's hard to believe really how far we've come in six years. Oh, sorry, four years for us, six years for me. But you've got like, shit, you've got way more years on me when it comes to um, actual horsemanship. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's such a good boy.